Hey, what's up guys? Coach Austin here with Coach Emily, and today we're going to talk about the dumbbell lateral raise. So the, one of the biggest things the dumbbell lateral raise that we see in terms of level of importance is going to be the actual setup. So a common thing that we see in setup is the desire to actually be in a position of just going straight out, which in terms of how you've learned this movement in the past, that could be a fairly good cue just to go kind of straight out here. But that is kind of where we see some impingement at the shoulder and where a lot of that trap involvement can come from. So if we want to give, give ourselves a better position for our medial delts, what we're actually going to do is as we come up here, we're actually going to go a little bit in front. So if you move your arms, there we go. And then also to get ourselves in a better position from a forward lean standpoint, Emily's actually going to hinge forward at her hip. So a common mistake here is actually to hinge forward or round at the upper back, which again, you can see almost Emily's trash just taking over that movement. So that's not what we want, okay? So getting ourselves in position there, thinking arms in, and then hinging at the hips. So if we give in these dumbbells. So another thing is as M gets in position here, another very common mistake that we're going to see is an actual explosion or creation of momentum from that bottom position and actually getting a really nice level of momentum, which can be good, but later on or as an addition to a set, not the entirety of the set or not the main objective of a set of dumbbell laterals. So as M gets back into position here, what we're going to do is actually start the movement slow. And as we get about a quarter of the way up, M's actually going to accelerate into that rep and pause for a one count at the top. Good. So again, as we're going up, we're not wanting to explode out of the bottom. We're wanting to give ourselves a position for those medial delts to actually start to gain some leverage. So if you see, you can see the medial delt fibers actually help pull the shoulder up and in this position. But from the very bottom, they don't have a lot of leverage. So we have to get them out into a position where they start to gain that leverage and where they can actually pull that arm up. So a few common mistakes that we see. One is going to be the chicken wing, we're naming it. Um, so the tendency to actually want to stay more pinned here at the scapula and get into a position where the medial delts are wanting to really pull here, but that's by the medial delts actually wanting to pull we're left in this position here. So we're not allowing our scapula to actually naturally glide and rotate here. And so we're putting ourselves in the position to actually like do this chicken wing movement, I kind of named it. Um, so a good way to actually counter, counteract that is going to be the setup we talked about in the beginning. So putting yourself in a better position from an arm position perspective, and then putting yourself in a better position from a hip flexion perspective and actually hinging at the hips there. And then another common mistake, which I did touch on in the first one, but again, is not pinning the shoulder blades down and back, because what that's going to do is actually, so if M does this and holds this, and even tries to go up, that's about as far as she can go. So it creates an excessive amount of impingement and discomfort in that shoulder joint. So as soon as she lets this go, you can see that the ability for her to actually get those medial delts more contracted, um, freeze up. So the last common mistake that we see is not wanting any trap involvement at all. And so the way our muscles work, they work in three dimensions, but they also work with integration within each other. And so to the medial delt, an opposing force to the medial delt, as the medial delt is pulling down this way, we need something else to stabilize to actually pull this way. And so as Emily is contracting and going up, the medial delt is actually pulling in that direction. We need something to pull in this direction. And that's the trap, the upper trap is in a great position to do that. And so you're going to actually feel some tension and some fatigue in those traps. Now, intent does come into play here as just thinking up, you're gonna get a lot more upper trap involvement. 
because that's a good function of the upper traps in a shrug movement. But if we're thinking actually out and up with our hands, actually thinking about punching the walls as we're going up, that's going to just allow this to be more of a stabilizer instead of a prime mover.